Hello, my name is Colin, and today I'm exploring the paper Liquid Assets, the Short-Run Liabilities of Binge Drinking. Binge Drinking, or Heavy Episodic Drinking, HED, being defined as heavy social drinking of the equivalent of one bottle of wine, followed by a period of abstinence. As I was a bartender for three years, this paper immediately jumped out at me, since I was looking to see if the findings would be in line with my personal experiences. It informed me of the general cost of binge drinking to the economy in ways I hadn't thought of before. The relevance of this study is due to the amount of binge drinking there is out there. In the UK alone, around 30% of men and 20% of women partake in HED, and the authors were looking to see how the age group of the people and the time of binge drinking affected alcohol-related arrest rates, A&E admissions, and alcohol-related car accidents. They did this by comparing the data given by police of the arrests of individuals under 30 and over 50 from 12 o'clock at night until 6 in the morning to A&E attendees with what the authors class as alcohol-related injuries, such as injuries to the hands, the face and the elbows from falling over, to car accidents from the Department of Transport containing the age of the person involved, the time and the severity of the accident. What was found was that during the week, arrests were more likely to happen in the daytime, but on Friday and Saturday nights, arrest rate increased by a rate of 71%. That does include both direct arrests, such as drunk and disorderly, and indirect, such as violent crime. This correlates to the increase of 6.6% additional attendances in young people being admitted to A&E, and an increase of 18.6%, to the number of road accidents, and sadly a 72% increase of fatal road accidents during the Friday-Saturday night period. Now, why is this important economically? Take, for example, drunk driving. According to the author's attempts to monetize the externality of binge drinking, they estimate that it costs around £1.52 billion per year, which is around 5.3 pence per mile, at the current rate of drunk driving arrests in the UK. This would lead to a fine of £22,800, when actually that fine is only 2500 This is a difference of 89%. Now, the authors do recognise that there are factors which could be influencing these results, such as illegal drug use. They postulate that as cannabis is mainly a substitute rather than complementary good, and as it generally doesn't see an increase in use at the weekends, it won't affect their argument. I would counter that as a former bartender, Drug use is much more prevalent than the 9% that they quote. And most of the injuries I have seen come from a combination of alcohol and illegal drugs. I do feel that as they write off illegal drug use from their study, they are hampering the results somewhat. I would also draw attention to the different years used as inputs for the study, specifically related to whether young people are more likely to be driving at the weekend. This data comes from a 2000 to 2001 time use survey, and so may not be relevant 20 years into the future. Could young people be driving less today than in 2001, simply because they can meet their friends virtually instead of in person? Whilst these discrepancies do exist, this study does show us the alarming impact HED has on the economy. How it impacts not just the lives of those involved, but also the average taxpayer. It provides a useful an important framework for further analysis of alcohol-related incidents and a set of results which can be utilised now to change current policy, in addition to raising the issues involved with our current solutions. Thank you ever so much for watching. Goodbye.